What is going on guys? Welcome back to Flake Garage. My name is Brian and in today's episode we're going to be installing a USB charger slash voltmeter. Uh, this little kit, I bought it on Amazon uh, thanks to some of the Facebook groups and Mazda forums. A big shout out to you guys. I found this so I thought it would be a cool mod to do. I don't use my cigarette lighter at all so I'd rather have a phone charger or something that was going to be more useful to me than what it currently is. What I was using the cigarette lighter for before was for my underbody lights, like I mentioned on my install guide and the hard body install guide was that we had the cigarette lighter plug for right now, but luckily the kit came with some wires to do a hard wire install in there. So we're gonna take care of that today as well. Let me show you what this little kit has, then we'll move on to the truck and tell you what you need to take apart. And then we'll proceed to installing the actual USB charger in there. So let's go ahead and get to it. Alright guys, so I picked this up. This is how it comes in the little box. You have your voltmeter slash USB charger here. There are 3.0, so they're gonna be pretty nice. And then it comes with a negative, positive, and some little ends for your cables here. Uh, this also has an inline fuse here, so that's gonna be pretty nice to be able to attach to our current cigarette lighter. Now, if you watch my underbody light guide or install video in the hard body, we are using the current cigarette lighter to light those up, but the kit also comes with this to kind of hardwire the lights into the truck. So we're gonna be installing this as well at the same time, just so we can leave everything nice and cleaned up on the inside. To remove some of the panels, we're gonna be using a Phillips, also a 14 millimeter long socket for the AC controls. There's a nut that's back there and a flathead screwdriver to take some of the stuff uh, like the knobs of the AC. Sometimes they're a little hard to take off, so if you can put this in there and give them a little wedge, that's gonna help. I also have this, which I'm gonna be most likely using. These are kind of ends um, that I'm gonna be putting in there to, for a cleaner install, and also some kind of uh, zip ties and whatnot, just in case I need it. It probably won't be necessary, but it's nice to have, so you can pick this uh, Harbor Freight for like, 15 less than 20 bucks something like that but it also comes in pretty handy when doing some electrical work but now that we know what we're going to be using let's move on to the truck and i'll show you what we need to take off all right guys so now we are here in the truck hopefully you guys are able to see everything good it's starting to get cold and dark a lot faster so i have to film a lot of this stuff inside my garage but i'm hoping you guys can see just fine so the first step uh for me to make it easier i'm gonna remove my steering wheel since i do have a quick release if you guys want to know how to put a quick release on your Mazda, check out the video. I'll link to it on the top. But we're going to remove this, so to remove it is easy. We just pull the center and take it out of the way. With that out of the way, I'm going to sit here on the driver's side. And then we need to remove this bezel. To remove this bezel, all you need to do is take four Phillips uh, screws off. There's going to be two on the top, one here, one here. And then you're going to have one about here and then one on this side. Once you take those four off and put them to the side, you can kind of just pull it from the top and kind of twist it and get it out of here. Don't forget to remove the plug to your light so you don't take that out. And then once it's removed, you can take that and put it to the side. From here, you're gonna have two Phillips screws as well to remove this whole piece. There's gonna be right here at the top. This is why we removed the bezel initially. And then there's gonna be a cover Right about here, you can pop that with the flathead and there's gonna be a screw right behind it. Also, don't forget to take your AC controls. This one just literally push out. Sometimes you have to use the flathead as well to kind of pry it out because it'll be kind of tight in there. Just make sure not to break it. Be careful with that. Once you take those two out, there's gonna be a 14 millimeter nut right here on the center holding this too. Take those out, put them to the side and then now you are ready to go. There's also, I already took it off, but your cigarette lighter is gonna be right here. Once you pull this, you literally can just pull it off and then just disconnect the light and the power to the cigarette lighter, which is gonna be this two right here. Once we get those out, we can put everything off to the side for now. We are ready to move on to the next step, which is gonna be looking at our plate so we can start installing the USB charger in here. So let's move to the bench and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right guys, so we have 
the thing off of ours. I don't know about you guys, let me show here up close, but basically this is supposed to just kind of pop off through the back. Mine definitely give me problems. Hopefully yours is just easy as just pushing it from the back. So I had to kind of pry mine with the flathead screwdriver and get it out of there. But like I said, hopefully you guys go a lot easier. But once it's off, as you can see, we have a nice empty circle here. What we need to do is we need to grind off a little bit of this plastic around so we can then fit this right through the center here. As you can see, it's gonna be a very nice tight fit right there. So we just need to grind off just a little bit of that edge and then we should be good. All right guys, so I do have a Dremel here. Mine's a Dremel 3000 and I'm using a small sanding disc. With this, we're gonna hit the edge of the bezel here and just slightly make it just a little bit bigger. So if you don't have a Dremel, you probably can do it with just a filing uh, stick or something like that. Try to get some of that out so you can put the new uh, USB charger in there. So let's do it. Alright guys, so now we have the piece nice and secure. As you can see, it still looks great. Factory flush with the rest of the mounts. And then on the back, it's nice and secure with this. So now we're ready to put this whole piece back where it was, and then we can move on to the next step. Alright guys, so we have our bolt meter nice and secure on this panel now. We have our back of the AC controls all nice and secure as well. We are ready to start moving on onto the wiring. Alright guys, so we have our cigarette lighter cable here. And if you notice here, they're kind of the ends that um, would slide into it. Kind of like I mentioned earlier, which is the reason why I have this kind of quick disconnects. We have male disconnects in here. This melt disconnect should be able to slide right into the spot and basically prevent us from having to splice anything back here. We're gonna be able to utilize this factory plug. And if you look at the harness that came with our bolt meter, this end is a female one ready to be plugged in into the back of the bolt meter. And then it has kind of a round end in here, which is where we're gonna put our new male end so we can plug into the back of this. So. Let's uh, do that real quick and then we should be able to start connecting everything here. We also need to plug in our lights for the underground uh, body kit. So we're gonna splice this ones at the same time that we splice this ones for the bulb meter. So hopefully it should be just one connection that plugs right into this and then we're good to go. so we have our connections all nice and done now I'm just gonna heat up the heat shrink so it's a nice and tight connection and we were basically ready to start putting this back together test it out see if the bolt meter is working and then ready to put it all back done all back together and done so let's do it all right guys so as I mentioned before we have our cable here already that is my cable that powers my underbody lights so we're gonna disconnect that at this point right here and connect the new cable that's coming out of our harness. That's gonna be this one here. We're gonna plug that one into that part and then we're gonna run it through the back. So obviously we need to run this first through here, have it connected right there and put that out of the way. And then we can move in to start to secure all of this. So let's do it.
All right, guys, so we have everything put back together. Everything is in place. We have our cables out of the way down there. Nothing is visible. I basically zip tie everything to what I could on top. And then our bulb meter is right here, nice and in place. We put our vessels back up. We put our AC panels and everything back together. So now all we got to do is turn our key on. And look at that. We start getting some bolt readings. Look at that, 12 volts. We are looking good. I plugged my, my phone um, to it earlier and it was also charging just perfect. So now you have two ports to charge. This could get in the way. Um, so if you don't want to have that in there, I recommend you take it off before you install it. And that way you'll be uh, not having to deal with this. But I put it on because I want to have it on just in case when I'm not using it. So we are good there. Let me just test my lights one more time. We put our lights on. They are on. Look at that. I'm changing colors. Everything's looking good. We are looking good to go. So that's pretty much all it takes. Oh, we're going down in bolts. I've been testing this a couple times, so let's just turn it off. And we are good. All right, guys, so that's how I installed this bulb meter slash USB charger into my Mazda B series. So don't forget to check out the link in the description below if you're thinking about picking one up and use this guide to help you out install it on yours. Now I'm able to charge two phones at the same time or maybe plug anything else that's USB related into this port as well as know what my bolts are. So I think it's a cool little mod to do for very cheap, very easy to get done. So don't forget to uh, like and leave us a comment if you have any questions or concerns. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more great content on our mini trucks, especially the Mazda B series and a Nissan Harbody, as well as some other videos here and there from other cars that hopefully we'll be showcasing to you guys. Uh, that's all I have for today. So hopefully we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.